Hey there, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to talk hardware for a minute because there's been a lot of talk recently about the new Navi AMD cards and uh, the new Super cards from from NVIDIA. And uh, there's, there's definitely a big battle going on right now between Team Red, which is AMD, and Team Green, which is um, NVIDIA. And uh, some of the things I've learned recently... And if you're in the DCS world, there's a few reasons why you probably wouldn't want to bother with the uh, new Radeon cards. One of which, the new feature called image sharpening, which I guess is kind of their answer to the DL, what is it, DLSS uh, that NVIDIA has. And I believe it's kind of like reshade. You know what I mean? It, it'll just sharpen images that are a little bit soft. Um, DCS World is a DirectX 11 title, so it's not going to work. There's no DirectX 11 support, uh, so the image sharpening will do absolutely nothing for you on the new 5700 or 5700 XT cards. Um, another reason that I prefer Team Green over Team Red is the fact that driver support is notoriously terrible for AMD cards. And they just don't, you know, make the best drivers. And a prime example of that is, um, there's an article here, I believe it was from PC Gamer, that basically states AMD's latest drivers drop performance by 10% or more in some games. That's terrible. They just launched these cards. That is not something you want to deal with, right? And then another thing that I found is... Um, I like to watch Linus Tech Tips a lot, and uh, those guys are pretty good. And where did I put that video? Let me see. If I can't find it right here, I will throw it at the uh, a link at the bottom of the page. But basically, what's going on is is the thermals are so bad on those cards right now that you know you'll have to wait for like a third party to come out with a better cooling solution on them but um, in the review that Linus Tech Tips did um, basically the card overheated just sitting in a menu for like Tomb Raider or something and uh, that's pretty bad you know like card shouldn't be sitting idle in a game and getting so hot that it just like shuts down uh, Definitely not a good time. But another thing worth mentioning is that this review that the guys over at uh, PC World did is probably the best overview of everything that went on in the past two or three weeks. Because these guys cover the Ryzen 3000 chips, they cover the Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT, and they also cover the uh, latest Super cards, which is the Super 2060 and the Super 2070. And um, from what I've gathered, and I've been paying attention to this a lot lately myself, because I have a regular RTX 2060, and I love it. And I think for DCS World, it's probably the best mid-range card that you're going to get. Um, and my performance is excellent for the most part. But I recently upgraded to a 3840 by 1080 monitor, which is 49 inches. So I'm pushing more pixels at this point, and my performance has dropped a bit. So my 2060 is starting to show, you know, some stress. Uh, I could get by just fine using this 2060, to be honest, and I'm still playing every day this way. It's not terrible by any means, but I want better. I didn't get this massive monitor, you know what I mean, to, 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 to chug away whenever I'm shooting rockets in my Vigan or something, you know, because there are certain things that are, you know, more noticeable than others when it comes to the 2060 running a monitor that wide. So anyway, I've been keeping track of this stuff, and from what it looks like, like the 2070 Super is like the best bang for the buck right now. The the Radeon 57 XT comes damn close, and for $100 less. You're talking a $400 card, which is the 5700 XT, and the 2070 Super is that $500 range card. The 2070 Super, from what everybody's saying, is like 90, 92 percent 
of what a regular 2080 non-TI is in terms of performance. That's pretty damn good. And I've seen in a lot of other reviews that uh, the 2070 Super even beats the 1080 Ti as well in a lot of stuff. And the 1080 Ti is matched by the 2080 non-TI, if that makes any sense, for the most part. Again, each one of them will give or take a little bit here and there. But for a $500 card, that's pretty good. I mean, if you look at Newegg right now, you know, the lowest price you're going to get on a brand new 2080 is, what, 679 These are refurbished up here, but you're talking, what, 679 I've seen them as low as, let's say, let's say 600 bucks. okay? You're still looking at five. 450 to 600 bucks for a used 1080 Ti. And that's in hopes that you get something that's good, that's not crap, that's been beat to shit by the miners. And I know this firsthand because I bought one. Actually, I bought this guy right here. And um, it's beat to shit. It worked for three days. It shit the bed. And what kills me is I sent it back. I should have my refund any day now, but this guy has already relisted this card. Like, literally. This is relisted. And uh, he's got it up there for 800 bucks now, and he even lists the uh, serial number. That's how I know this dude is, like, you know, just doesn't care. And granted, it does have a couple more years warranty left on it, so I could have went through and RMA'd it myself through MSI, but I didn't want to do that, man. I paid $450 for something that the guy claimed was good to go and, you know, should be fine, and it wasn't. But it did run DCS really nice on this new monitor that I have. So what I'm looking for right now is something between that 2070 and a 2080 Ti. Now, July 23rd, the 2080 Super comes out. And the 2080 Super uses a 2080 Ti chip with less memory, 8 gigabytes versus, I believe, the 11. But it's not going to close, it's not, they're not going to let it come close to 2080 Ti performance. But it's got to be like 10% better than a vanilla 2080. And it, there has to be value to it. You know what I mean? Like from everything I've seen. And here's the other thing. This is what leads me to believe that there, that it's really going to be awesome. If you watch this review right here, this is the hardware guy from PC World. He even talks about for a minute about like, you know, he's kind of excited for the fact that the 2080 Super and he can't say anything about it. You know what I mean? But from what, from what I've gathered from this guy's little hints, man, the 28 Super is going to be something else. And here's the, here's the clincher. The 28 Super is going to come in at $699. So it's going to take the place of the regular 2080 at this point. And the other thing to keep an eye out for is when that happens, these other 2080s are going to drop in price because they're going to purge all these to make room for this 2080 Supers, and these are going to go away. So you might even be able to find a vanilla 2080, uh, 600 bucks, maybe less than 600 bucks would be my guess. And the other thing to keep in mind is that the 2080 Ti is set to drop to 999. Now, right now, the cheapest one you can buy brand new out of the box is what 1099, I believe. The EVGA is the one I was looking at. So that should drop some of these guys down to be competitive. So some of these other ones, you know, probably are going to be in that $1,000 range instead of that $1,200, $1,300 to $1,400 range like some of them are. Granted, some of the ones like the Duke and some of the other high-end ROG Strix ones, you know, they're probably still going to demand a, a, a premium price. But again, it's a good time to want a video card. And, you know, like a like I said, for DCS world, you know, my main concern is I see a lot of people asking questions, you know, hey, man, is, should I get the new AMD card? Should I get the new NVIDIA card? I figured I'd throw this video together because I've been doing this homework myself. And I'm leaning hard towards, man, for 500 bucks, I can get the, the 2070 Super, which is damn close to 2080 performance um, for 500 bucks. 
and supposedly rivals a 1080 Ti and beats a 1080 Ti in a lot of different games. Now the thing that sucks is nobody uses DCS for performance or flight sims in general, and I'll give them credit, there's not a lot to work with out there, so I could see why. But, from what I've seen, again, from the little bits that I've provided here, you know, the image sharpening is not going to work with the Radeon because DCS is DirectX 11. Um, AMD has always been notoriously terrible with driver support. And what they have right now, that 5700 XT, looks like a great card for 400 bucks. If you look at the numbers against the, uh, the 2070 Super, it's pretty damn close for $100 less. In a couple of games, I think it even edged it out by a couple frames per second. But... It's not going to run DCS that great because, you know, you're not going to be able to take advantage of the image sharpening, which supposedly sharpens the image without performance hit. Um, you may have performance loss because of shitty driver support. And the thermals are insane on these things right now. So for 100 bucks less than a 2070 Super, that new 5700 XT is, is going to be more of an experiment for somebody than probably a, a wise solution, I think, at this point. And again, maybe when the third party you know cards come out with better cooling solutions. But again, if it gets that hot and you need that kind of cooling solution, that's the kind of thing that scares me away. But everything I've seen so far, and I'm going to put some links in the video, uh, especially for this review. I, I highly suggest anybody interested in any of the new stuff that happened in the last two weeks and are thinking about upgrading to, to watch this video because these guys at PC World really know their shit. And so does Linus Tech Tips. Those guys are really, really smart and uh, really helpful in terms of the stuff that they put out. And I keep an eye on those guys all the time. But again, man, I think, you know, it, it's it's a great time right now to be into this and, and to be into upgrades. And then the other thing I was going to say is that the Ryzen 3000 stuff, you know, from what, even from what these guys say, you're still better off with an i9-9900K when it comes to gaming. It still edges out even that 3900X by, you know, a few frames per second, and it's noticeable. It's the multitasking and the multi-threaded stuff that the AMD chips seem to be dominating with right now. So I don't know. I don't think... Um, they're terrible for DCS, but I still think my i5-9600K, man, that can run at 5 gigahertz very reliably and cool, isn't a bad option for what I'm doing. I'm not seeing any issues, and um, I'm definitely happy with what I got. I don't need an i7 or an i9, and others were arguing with me the other day, oh, you know, better processor is going to be better down the road for longevity. I get that. You may be right about that, but I had an i5-2500K for like damn near eight or nine years up until I upgraded that recently. And that's all I needed, you know, because here's the thing to keep in mind. Nobody's pushing multi-threaded stuff. DCS only uses the two cores out of how many that you have. Until somebody changes that, then the stuff that AMD doing is doing is going to be relevant for us. And I'm not going to say that, you know, Flight Simulator, when it comes out, might not be able to take advantage of it. That might change everything. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, you know, the AMD processors aren't a terrible idea. I'm just saying right now today for the game that we all love and play most, DCS World, the, you know, the i5 or the i7 or the i9 seems like a damn good option. But if you do more than that and you want to do some productivity stuff, you know, give one of the new 3000 series a shot. They seem like a really good buy in terms of the, pros the, the, the cost per processing power that you get out of them. And, um, you know, it's not terrible. I've seen worse things happen over the years when it comes to hardware and technology. So it's definitely an exciting time right now. So if you're planning on any upgrades, I just wanted to throw this out there. You know, I'll, I'll put the links in the, in the video here that... Watching this video is probably a good idea. Keeping an eye on Newegg and the different costs between the cards over the next few weeks, because I think things are going to change drastically. These cards are going to drop. The existing, the, the existing uh, 2080s and the 2080 Ti is definitely coming down. They even said that's going to be the 999 mark now. And uh, be careful with eBay, guys. Like I said, I got that card for 450, and this dude's reselling it already for like 800 bucks. It just got back in his hands yesterday. And it's the same exact card. And I know there's a problem with it. 
I mean, that's the downside of buying used. You know what I mean? Especially these guys that just beat the shit out of cards doing this crypto mining. But I think that's about everything I got. But, you know, there, there's some definitely some good information out there. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm a hardware expert. But, I mean, my background was writing about PC game simulations and hardware. And I used to be the hardware guy for uh, uh, Flight Simulator World magazine. I've done stuff for Computer Pilot over the years. Uh, even my own website back in the day when it came to the first generation cards. Shit, man. I was one of the first guys to review one of the very first 3D accelerators ever which was the terrible, I think it was Diamond Edge, which emulated the Sega Saturn, and it came with like a shitty version of Virtua Fighter. And then the rendition cards came out, then the Voodoo cards, and man, Voodoo was great for simulations back in the day. But, you know, that that's another story for another time. But, um, like I said, I'll throw some links in the uh, bottom of the video here for you guys to check out, but... Um, do some research. Definitely look into it. You know, it's, it's worth it. And there's enough of it out there. But like I said, I'm leaning heavily towards another Team Green card. I don't see why not to. And to be honest, the 2060 Super is also an insanely awesome value at like 400 bucks. You know, excellent driver support. No issues. It's faster than the regular 2060. And dude, I've been using a 2060 since like, you know, what, January, whenever I built this new PC. And I've not had really much of a problem with anything. And the only reason I'm replacing it is because I got this big ultra wide monitor that takes a little bit more to push the pixels. You know, if I run everything like on my videos, you've seen the videos, I bump everything back down the 1920 by 1080 to take the video. And uh, I've had great performance at that. And that's just with a single 2060. And the new 2060 Super has eight gigabytes versus six. I'm running on a six gigabyte 2060, and DCS is freaking amazing. And so it's pretty much all the games I play. So give it a shot, guys. Uh, I hope this has been very helpful. Uh, I'm always looking for those uh, comments and suggestions. And uh, please subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching.